The prayer of Manasses, king of Judah, when he was holden captive in Babylon. Quote, O Lord, almighty God of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and their righteous seed, who has made heaven and earth with all the ornament thereof, who has bound the sea by the word of thy commandment, who has shut up the deep and sealed it by thy terrible and glorious name, whom all men fear and tremble before thy power. For the majesty of thy glory cannot be borne. And thine angry threatening towards sinners is importable, but thy merciful promise is unmeasurable and unsearchable. For thou art the Most High Lord, of great compassion, long-suffering, very merciful, and repentest of the evils of men. Thou, O Lord, according to thy great goodness, hast promised repentance and forgiveness to them that have sinned against thee. And of thine infinite mercies hast appointed repentance unto sinners, that they may be saved. Thou therefore, O Lord, that thou art the God of the just, hast not appointed repentance to the just, as to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, which have not sinned against thee. But thou hast appointed repentance unto me that am a sinner. For I have sinned above the number of the sands of the sea. My transgressions, O Lord, are multiplied. My transgressions are multiplied. And I am not worthy to behold and see the height of the heaven for the multitude of mine iniquities. I am bowed down with many iron bands that I cannot lift up mine head, neither have any release. For I have provoked thy wrath and done evil before thee. I did not thy will, neither kept I thy commandments. I have set up thy abominations. I have multiplied offenses. Now therefore I bow the knee of mine heart, beseeching thee of grace. I have sinned, O Lord, I have sinned, and Lord forgive me, and destroy me not with mine iniquities. Be not angry with me forever by reserving evil for me, neither condemn me into the lowest parts of the earth. For thou art the God of them that repent, and in me, for thou wilt save me, that I am unworthy according to thy great mercies. Therefore thou wilt show all thy goodness. I will praise thee for ever all the days of my life, for all the powers of the heavens do praise thee, and thine is the glory for ever and ever. End quote. Amen. My prayer also. Lois I. Roden. The Prophecy of Dan. Quote, I, Dan, have waited for thy salvation, O Lord. End quote. Genesis 49, 18. Of Dan, Rachel said of her firstborn son from Bilhah, her handmaid, quote, God hath judged me, and hath also heard my voice, and hath given me a son. Therefore called she his name Dan. End quote. Genesis 30, verse 6. Quote, Dan shall judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel. End quote. Genesis 49, verse 16. Quote, Dan shall be a serpent by the way, an adder in the path, that biteth the horse heels, so that his rider shall fall backward. End quote. Genesis 49, verse 17. The tail of a serpent, the thirteenth tribe. Numbers chapter 10, verse 25, chapter 21, verses 6 to 9, and Revelation chapter 7, verse 9. The tribe of Dan, quote, The standard of the camp of Dan shall be on the north side by their armies, end quote. Numbers chapter 2, verse 25 and 31, last part. Ezekiel chapter 48, verse 1. Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 15, quote, For a voice declareth from Dan and publisheth affliction from Mount Ephraim, end quote. Verse 16, quote, Make mention to the nations, behold, publish against Jerusalem, that watchers come from a far country and give out their voice against the cities of Judah, end quote. Verse 27, quote, For thus hath the Lord said, The whole land shall be desolate, yet will I not make a full end, end quote. Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 1, quote, Run ye to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem, and see now and know, and seek in the broad places thereof, if ye can find a man, if there be any that executeth the judgment, that seeketh the truth, and I will pardon it, end quote. Dan, a lion's whelp.
Never has the relationship of the tribe of Dan, a lion's whelp, as judge been established. Only by tracing their history through their ancestral wanderings as one of the so-called Ten Lost Tribes can we understand the connecting link in the chain of prophecy of Genesis 49 and Deuteronomy 33. The name Dan, the fifth son of Jacob, in Hebrew and Irish means judge, and is the same whether rendered Dan, Don, Dun, Din, or Den. In the division of the land by lot, Dan was given a narrow strip of seacoast west of Ephraim and Benjamin, which soon became inadequate as they increased in numbers. Quote, and the seventh lot came out of the tribe of the children of Dan according to their families. End quote. Joshua chapter 19 verse 40. The scriptural record, Joshua chapter 19 verse 47, begins the history of their push inland, north and westward to the islands, both by land and sea. The Tale of a Serpent Quote, The coast of the children of Dan went out too little for them. Therefore the children of Dan went up to fight against Leshem, and took it and smote it with the edge of the sword, and possessed it, and dwelt therein, and called Leshem Dan, after the name of Dan their father. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Dan, according to their families, these cities with their villages. Joshua chapter 19, verse 48. Read verses 41 to 46. Please note that on all their possessions was the name of Dan, their father. The family name was their mark, which they left on each conquered territory, making their places of sojourn readily identifiable. Sacred history became a part of the history of the nations, which could never be lost. Judges chapter 18, verse 1. Quote, in those days there was no king in Israel, and in those days the tribe of the Danites sought them an inheritance to dwell in. For unto that day all their inheritance had not fallen unto them among the tribes of Israel. Verse 2, quote, And the children of Dan sent of their family five men from their coasts, men of valor, from Zerah and from Eskhtaol, to spy out the land and to search it. And they said unto them, Go, search the land, who when they came to Mount Ephraim, to the house of Micah, they lodged there. Verse 4, quote, And he, the Levite, said, Micah hath hired me, I am his priest. Verse 5, quote, And they said unto him, Ask counsel, I pray thee, of God, that we may know whether our way which we shall go shall be prosperous. Verse 6, quote, And the priest said unto them, Go in peace. Before the Lord is your way, wherein ye go. End quote. Verse 8, quote, And they came unto their brethren, to Zorah and Eskhtaol, and their brethren said unto them, What say ye? And they said, And that we may go up against them. Be not slothful to go, and to enter and possess the land. Verse 11, quote, And there went from thence of the family of the Danites, out of Zorah and out of Eskhtaol, Six hundred men, appointed with weapons of war. End quote. Verse 12, quote, And they went up and pitched in Kirjath Jearim, in Judah. Wherefore they called that place Manani, Dan, unto this day. Behold, it is behind Kirjath Jearim. Verse 13, quote, And they passed thence, from that place, unto Mount Ephraim, and came to the house of Micah. Verse 14, quote, then answered the five men that went out to spy out the country of Laish, Do ye know that there is in these houses an ephod, and teraphim, and a graven image, and a molten image? Verse 17, quote, And the five men that went to spy out the land went up, and came in thither, and took the graven image, and the ephod, and the teraphim, and the molten image, end quote. Verse 20, quote, and the priest's heart was glad, and he took the ephod and the teraphim and the graven image and went in the midst of the people, Danites. Verse 26, quote, And the children of Dan went their way, end quote. Verse 27, quote, And they took the things which Micah had made, and the priest which he had, and came unto Laish, and burnt the city with fire. 
Verse 28, quote, And they built a city, end quote. Verse 29, quote, And they called the name of the city Dan, after the name of Dan, their father, who was born unto Israel, end quote. Verse 30, quote, And the children of Dan set up the graven image, and Jonathan, the son of Gershom, the son of Manasseh, he and his sons were priests to the tribe of Levi until the day of the captivity of the land, 733 B.C., and their dispersion into Assyria. Verse 31, quote, And they set up Micah's graven image, which he made, all the time that the house of God was in Shiloh, end quote. Dan was regarded as the extreme northern point of Israel, with Beersheba as the southern. Judges chapter 20, verse 1, and Deuteronomy chapter 34, verse 1. It was the gateway for all northern invasions into the land of Israel. Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 15, and chapter 8, verse 16. Laish, renamed Dan's city, is located yet in the Hule, near the sources of the sacred river Jordan. At the time of its capture by the Danites, it was dominated by the Phoenicians of Sidon, a famous port city. Later, it was sacked by Ben-Hadad, king of Oram Damascus, 1 Kings chapter 15, verse 20, and failed to recover but remained a village, Kefir Dan, and identical with Al-Qaeda today, Tel Dan or Hill of Dan, or Hill of the Judge on one of the main sources of the River Jordan. Archaeological excavations begun in 1966 uncovered strong fortifications and building remains dating to the time of Jeroboam I, 10th century BC. The evidence of the destruction of Dan's city confirms the biblical story of the conquest of Dan and identification of the city of Dan with Laish. The name of Dan still lives in the northern kibbutz in the Hule Valley, founded in 1939, situated on the Syrian border where it bore the brunt of enemy attacks in the War of Independence, 1948, and the period preceding the Six-Day War. Its founders were European, and they were joined by new members from various countries. Quote, and the standard of the camp of the children of Dan set forward, which was the rearward of all the camps throughout their hosts. End quote. Numbers chapter 10, verse 25, and chapter 2, verse 31. Quote, and they shall come from the east, and from the west, and from the north, and from the south, and shall sit down in the kingdom of God. End quote. Quote, and behold, there are last which shall be first, and there are first which shall be last. End quote. Luke chapter 13, verse 29 and 30. In the numbering of the children of Israel in the wilderness, the standard of the tribe of Dan was on the north side by their armies. Quote, they shall go hindmost last with their standards. End quote. Numbers chapter 2, verse 25 and 31. Quote, now these are the names of the tribes from the north end to the coast of the way of Hethlon, the border of Damascus northward to the coast of Hamath. For these are his sides east and west, a portion for Dan, end quote. Ezekiel chapter 48, verse 1. In the new division of the land, each tribe is to get a full-length strip from east to west. Quote, the portion of Dan is the first on the north. Tommy Greetings, volume 2, number 42, page 38. God said, quote, For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. End quote. Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 24. Thus Dan is first to receive his inheritance in the new division of the land in the kingdom, the head and not the tail. Quote, so shall ye divide this land unto you according to the tribes of Israel. Joseph shall have two portions. End quote. Ezekiel 48, verses 13 and 21. Quote, and ye shall inherit it, one as well as another, concerning that which I lifted up mine hand to give it unto your fathers, and this land shall fall unto you for an inheritance. End quote. Ezekiel 47, verse 14. The Tale of a Serpent. Summary. 
The tribe of Dan left their mark, name, historically speaking, upon the sands of time, even as a serpent's trail is formed in the dust of the earth, telling where he has been and where he has gone. The simple truth of the whereabouts of the so-called lost ten tribes of Israel is clearly seen by tracing the sojourn of one of their tribes, the tribe of Dan, which left the name of their father from their coastal inheritances successively on Leshem, Joshua chapter 19, verse 47, a conquered territory, Judges chapter 18, verses 11 and 12, behind Kirjath Jearim in Judah, and they named it Mahane, Dan. From thence to Mount Ephraim, they smote Laish and named it Dan, Judges chapter 18, verse 29, and picked up Micah's Levite priest with ornaments of the sanctuary, an ephod and teraphim, and a graven image and a molten image, end quote. Judges chapter 18, verse 14, quote, And the sons of Manasseh were priests to the tribe of Dan until the day of their captivity, end quote, which again tracks the sojourn of the Danites with the other nine tribes to the isles of the sea north, Isaiah chapter 23, verse 2, by ship, Dan abode in ships, and by land of Samaria, west through the Caucasian Pass and onward. At this point in time, they, the ten tribes, took on the name Skolot, nomads, and from the name, we are all familiar with the modern versions, Scotty, Scots, Scot, meaning wanderers, Hosea chapter 9, verse 17. Their western march across the European continent was clearly drawn by name. The English equivalent of the Hebrew Dun is Dan, which is hidden in the names of his resting place, in their trek across the continent of Europe to the Isles of the Sea, the Spanish Peninsula. Medina, Sidonia, Macedonia, Dardanelles, the streams of Europe, Dnieper, Dinister, and the Don, names reminiscent of the sacred river Jordan, capital cities, London, Edinburgh, reveal their wanderings, places of sojourn. Likewise, the people of the country of Denmark, Danmark, meaning Dan's resting place, are called Danes, the original owners of all the Scandinavian countries. Dan in Hebrew means judge. And as one of the tribes of Israel shall render a verdict, that we may know the ten tribes are not lost, but have renewed their strength and are waiting to proclaim their identity through prophecy. As early as 900 BC, records from the seaports of Palestine show that the ten tribes colonized in the Isles north and west before their Assyrian captivity in 721 BC. Certainly, Dan is a lion's whelp. He shall leap from Bashan in Palestine and flee to the north and the west by ship and by foot, sea and land. The first settlers of Ireland were called Tuathede Daanans, tribe of Dan, whose name appears in their cities and streams, Danslow, Don Eagle Bay, London Dury, Dangan Castle, birthplace of the Duke of Wellington, also the city of Edinburgh in Scotland, the rivers Don Dune in England, the river Don and London City, just a few. Dan's presence in the Isles, both Judah and Dan, are termed a lion's whelp. The family of Judah was a lion and became associated with the serpent and found its way into the national seal of Ireland as a lion with a serpent's tail, Dan, a seal of three lions with serpent's tails representing Denmark, Norway, and Sweden, which were originally under the dominion of Denmark. The Thirteenth Tribe of Israel, Revelation chapter 7, verses 9 14 and 15. Quote, and after this, sealing of 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes of Israel, I beheld and lo, a great multitude, Revelation chapter 7, verses 9 to 12, which no man can number, of all nations and all kindreds and all people and all tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. Verse 10. Quote, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God which sitteth upon the throne, 
and unto the Lamb. Verse 13, quote, And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? Verse 14, And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest, and he said unto me, These are they who came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Verse 15, quote, Therefore they are before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. The Merkaba throne extends to earth in the judgment of the living. Verse 17, quote, For the Lamb is in the midst of the throne, and shall feed them with truth, and shall lead them unto living fountains of water. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. End quote. Revelation chapter 7, verses 10 to 17. The first fruit harvest with wave sheaf and wave loaves. A.D. 31. The sealing of the servants of our God in the seventh chapter of Revelation is primarily for the first fruit harvest in the house of God. Let it be remembered that there are four parts of the first fruits. One, the prophets all fall under the class of the wave sheaf as they are always martyrs for the sake of the truth they bring, whether they live or die, for they are despised and rejected by those whom they are sent to save. 2. First of the first fruits, the wave sheaf. Exodus 23, 19, 34, 26, and chapter 23, verse 10, Ezekiel chapter 44, verse 30. An unnumbered company, a multitude offered during the Passover week in two parts, Christ plus the multitude. 3. The first fruits, two wave loaves, a numbered company offering for Judah and Israel offered on the day of Pentecost. Please note, the wave loaves were just the thank offering for the first fruits. Tract 3, page 78, paragraph 1. And both, two, houses of Israel. One would need to stretch the imagination to say the 144,000 on the day of Pentecost, A.D. 31, fully represented all 12 tribes, as the so-called 10 lost tribes of Israel never returned to their homeland after the Assyrian captivity and have remained scattered among the nations unto this day. 4. The second part of the first fruits, the 3,000, another numbered company brought to view on the very day of Pentecost. Verse 5, quote, and there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Quote, the multitude came together. End quote. Read verses 6 to 11. Acts chapter 2, verses 36 and 37. House of Israel, ten tribes. Verse 39, quote, For the promise is unto you, and to your children, and to all that are afar off even as many as the Lord our God shall call, end quote. Verse 41, quote, Then they that gladly receive his word were baptized, and the same day, day of Pentecost, there were added unto them, the 120, about 3,000 souls, end quote. Read verses 46 and 47. Clearly then, the 3,000 were the part of the first fruits offered on Pentecost as a thank offering for those ten tribes still scattered in every nation under heaven, those second fruits to whom the disciples were sent, the lost sheep of the house of Israel, after the day of Pentecost, A.D. 31, until A.D. 34. And so they went, they carried the gospel to all the then known world, to the remnant of which Paul speaks, quote, There is a remnant according to the election of grace, end quote. Subsequently, the gospel went to the Gentiles after A.D. 34. Quote, For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy, and if the root be holy, so are the branches. End quote. Romans chapter 11, verse 5 and 16. Quote, For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye, Gentiles, be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part on the two tribes is happened to Israel, until the fullness of the Gentiles come in. Verse 26, quote, And so all Israel, ten tribes, shall be saved, as it is written, 
There shall come out of Sion the deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Verse 27, quote, For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. End quote. Romans chapter 11, verses 25, 26, and 27. It is an historical fact that the ten tribes were scattered to the four winds among the nations, coming in contact with the gospel of the English-speaking countries. From these few points, we can also see that the second fruits are divided into at least two parts. Second fruits from the house of God, from A.D. 31 to A.D. 34, among the nations, and the Gentile second fruits, also among the nations of the whole world. Thus was the prophecy fulfilled, quote, The Lord sent a word unto Jacob, Messiah came to the two tribes, and it hath lighted upon Israel, the ten tribes, and all the people shall know, even Ephraim and the inhabitants of Samaria, the ten tribes, end quote. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 8 and 9. Notice, the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, sent unto Jacob two tribes. He came to his own tribe Judah, and his own received him not, lighted not upon Judah, but upon Israel, ten tribes. The light of the gospel was received by the ten tribes, Protestantism. Quote, Israel, twelve tribes, hath not obtained that which he seeketh for. The two tribes looked for an earthly king. But the election, ten tribes, hath obtained it, a ruling earthly monarchy in the isles, as well as the gospel of the kingdom to Israel. Quote, Blindness in part, two tribes, is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. End quote. These elect first fruits of the ten tribes, the three thousand, with the one hundred and twenty, planted the standard of the gospel of grace of the Deliverer among the nations of earth. Thus, in Abraham's seed, the Messiah, all the nations of the earth have been blessed and shall be brought forth to stand before the heavenly throne, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God for ever and ever. Amen. Revelation chapter 7, verse 12 and chapter 5, verse 12. John saw this great multitude of living saints, wave sheaf of Revelation chapter 7 verse 9 as they sang a new song message quote saying thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and nation and hast made us unto God kings and priests like the wave sheaf of the dead in heaven and we shall reign on the earth. End quote. Revelation chapter 5, verses 9 and 10. The wave sheaf of the living are on earth. They are revealed while the harvest for the wave loaves is in process. It was at the Feast of Tabernacles that the antitypical wave sheaf was anointed for his ministry to the first fruits. Note The Feast of Tabernacles is the time of baptism for the ceremonial wave sheaf candidates. But, before the first fruits were mature, an hitherto unknown multitude arose from the dead without being judged, and were translated, received eternal life with their great high priest, to the heavenly courts, and were offered as the wave sheaf of the dead. They became a living type. Track 3, page 79, of a living wave sheaf resurrected from spiritual death in trespasses and sins that shall never die, and who shall be translated to the throne of God to appear as judges of the living first fruits who also shall never taste death. The wave sheaf of the dead, with their Messiah, returned to earth to finish the first fruit harvest and ascended to heaven at the end of forty days in AD 31. They are there today awaiting those taken as wave sheaf from every kindred, nation, and tongue who judge the 140,000 firstfruits of the living. Revelation chapter 14, verses 3 and 4, quote, And they sang, as it were, a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that, their song, of their experience, but the 140,000 who were also redeemed from the earth. 
The voice of the harpers of verse 2 first teach the song to the first of the first fruits, the great multitude of Revelation chapter 7, verse 9, who teach it to the 144,000 who go through a similar experience. That is, by studying their type, the wave sheaf of the living learn the truth about themselves, the antitype. Quote, and when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. And I beheld, and I heard the voice of many, not all, angels round about the throne, and the beasts and the elders, and the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand and thousands of thousands. End quote. Revelation chapter 5, verses 8 and 11. Quote, And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory of the beast, and over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, first in the church, stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. Revelation 15, 2. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, the statutes and judgments and commandments, and the song of the Lamb, the gospel of the ceremonial law as interpreted by the spirit of prophecy, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, for all nations shall come to worship before thee, for thy judgments are made manifest, known. Revelation chapter 15, verses 2, 3, and 4.